hello and welcome. I am Ben the Myth 5 and I come at you with yet more Kerbal Space Program content. Now this week's video is a bit of a big one. I'm quite proud of this one and it uh, took me a lot of effort and it was quite difficult. It took me a lot of time so uh, yeah, I really do hope that you really enjoy this one and uh, if you, this is in fact the first time you've seen my content then uh, this is probably, you know, my best content I've created so far. Anyway, as you can see, I am launching an SSTO vehicle. Now, this SSTO has exactly enough fuel to get to low curve and orbit and about it because that's what its role is for this mission. Because in this mission, we are in fact heading all the way to Lathe. That's right, we are landing three Kerbals and establishing a base on Lathe. Uh, because I have in fact got some contracts and I try to work out what's the most what's the cheapest way I can get something to Lathe and back again. Now, we have two options for um Lathe, which is we can use a conventional lander with parachutes like I did for my Juno mission. However, Lathe has a very thick atmosphere with air breathing engines, which allows an SSTO like this which would work on Kerbin to work on Lathe. So as a result, I am in fact going to be using this SSTO I am sending up now as the lander for our Lathe mission and I will in fact be then sending up later a via a conventional rocket just simply because it was too heavy to lift a um a supply module which refuels the craft and also has a nuclear engine to allow it to perform into space travel into interplanetary travel and yes I did do lots of maths and think very hard and basically an SSTO is the most efficient way to land something on the surface of Lathe however a um, in interplanetary wise as far as getting stuff to low curve orbit and transferring it and stuff like that a um, SSTO is not the best way it would one massive SSTO would actually start to lose efficiency just because of how much fuel those uh, and how many um, rapier engines I'd need to actually successfully do it. So as a result I'm setting up a large rocket, an unseen type of rocket before, it's my um, um, K-class rocket. I send up a single K-class rocket with all of the um, fuel which is required to resupply this lander here for a lathe landing and also perform the transfer for it. So um, yeah, as you can see I've in fact used the launch of the SSTO to um, actually describe the overall mission plan and as the mission goes ahead I will in fact um, describe what's going on and give you guys my best insight and things to say. Just by the way that you can what you can see me launching here is my um, uh, interplanetary transfer vehicle and uh, yes it does have a recoverable booster which I think is pretty cool also because um, I, when I was sifting through this um, I in fact had over 30 hours worth of um, uh, footage so I did cut out quite a lot, so I w if I did cut out something which was fairly standard or boring, I'll explain it. So as you can see here, um, I in fact skipped my my target catch-up. It was a fairly simple maneuver they used, rather similar to that which is used by um, the space station um, docking to the ISS, where I basically made sure that the um, uh, that this thing that I launched, the um, interplanetary transfer stage which I'm attaching to the SSTO um, I made sure that it was um, in a lower orbit so it could catch up to the SSTO and then I flew it up and I docked it just like this and this is the docking footage you can see here going on. Now as you can see um, the upper stage is recoverable and I did perform the maneuver just like the last second for a um, return you know, to, to the Kerbal Space Center. However, I need to obviously do a slow down burn much earlier, 
which results in a complete crash and destruction of the vehicle but that doesn't bother me too much so this is me performing my first ejection burn from Kerbin. I had to split over several burns just simply because the uh, nuclear engine here is not very powerful um, but it's definitely very efficient so as a result it's what I'm doing however to actually send it all the way you know, to do all the burns I need it to do I've in fact um, split it up over uh, multiple escape burns from Kerbin. Just a small aside I'd like to make about the engine there. Uh, you might have noticed if you are some of my more observant viewers that is in fact where the probe core and is attached. It also has its own RCS thrusters and is detachable. That's because once the um, so there's two reasons for this. A nuclear engine is in fact about uh, f just over a third of the um, total cost of the actual transfer stage and I do like to keep my costs down so um, as you can imagine I could do that by um, um, by detaching it from the craft and um, then redocking it to the docking port which the transfer stage was attached to and landing the whole craft like that and recovering it for the maximum number of funds however it also serves another purpose once the inter stage is rather low then since the um, SSTO itself is full of empty tanks I can then transfer the fuel into the actual SSTO itself and ditch the empty tanks and shed a lot of empty useless weight and then if I do that then it then means that I have a bucket load of SSTO um, Delta V so that I can be a bit more uh, it means I can yeah, do more with the um, craft because if well it's got more Delta V and Delta V is quite important and useful and stuff you know it's your ability to change velocity and well in the space game changing your velocity is what it's all about So yes, here is me just dropping myself into a um, Julian orbit. Um, I cut a, a lot of time warping, but uh, I actually got Tylo assist, but it wasn't actually going to be good enough to drop me into a um, a um, dual orbit. So I uh, performed a burn around Tylo to drop my apoapsis because that's more efficient than burning around uh, jewel itself and then as a result I then this is me performing a, a burn to lower my apoapsis to intersect that of lathe as you can see here also I'm skipping out maneuver node planning because you can actually see them and you can actually see my actual burn which is more important and if I include all of my maneuver node planning this video c would be easily over an hour long and I know that people don't watch videos if they're an hour long uh, trust me I tried to, to, just to see if people would do it plus uh, yeah anyway that was my eve mission I did a few months ago but yeah Al analytics told me that uh, people don't really care about videos once they kind of get past the 20 minute mark so as a result I wanted to keep this video below 20 minutes so I cut out some of the stuff like that anyway that was me detaching from the cramp from the uh, interstage, interplanetary stage, and I had to deal with using the um, um, powered engines, the um, oxidizer breathing engines, which you know it's not ideal. It's not the most efficient way of conducting flight, but given the circumstances, is all I had, to, I could do. And here is me landing, well, re-entering, and uh, this was a bit unexpected. Um, Basically, I thought that if I tilt it up right, I could actually cut down on my um, delta V expenditure. But um, turns out I actually couldn't because it, um, yeah. Well, I thought it would if I tilt it upwards, it would it would make me uh, be, be more unaerodynamic and chew up more of the um, um, 
and make me slow down and save delta v that way or you know change my landing site in this case but uh, it's actually the opposite because laser atmosphere it's not what I was expecting so it meant that yeah I actually started dipping up and gaining altitude and going forwards anyway now that we are here and we have landed and we are slowly slowly rolling but that's fine it's not too much of an issue we can uh yeah get Jebediah out there the uh, lovely pilot and he can uh, get out and plant a flag you know just testing the RCS just because you know I knew it didn't work but I know just like being like hey it didn't work anyway I had to walk a long distance to collect this rock and this rock is in fact very important because it was one of the missions one of the missions was to collect the rock so yeah this is me collecting the uh, rock and completing the missions just so you know I can show you guys completing the mission which is you know the whole point of this video anyway uh, that was just to show you how far away I've rolled and this is just some sped up footage of uh, me deploying all of my um, base which I made well designed to be set up uh, although I don't have any um, any uh, way of transmitting the data back yet I could um, definitely um, uh, bring back the data via a um, satellite I might send later with a relay because that could definitely send the data back so this is actually just me doing all the science that I stored on the craft itself because that can supply some very useful science and here is our scientist and the reason why I brought three Kerbals and not just one is so I could in fact set up a large base like this because bases like this produce some can produce some very useful science and are quite fun to set up just because they look cool on the surface you know anyway here's me taking off um, I knew which direction I needed to take off in because I knew that when I was landing the direction I came from was actually opposite well I was pointing towards Jewel which meant that I knew that when I took off I needed to head back towards Jewel I needed to point towards Jewel again so anyway um, um, I, I basically packed just enough fuel to, to get back like actually spoiler alert we actually run out of fuel and don't quite put ourselves in orbit because I was you know being very very stingy about the amount of um, fuel I brought um, just because but anyway uh, not to fear we do actually manage to put ourselves in orbit using a little trick where um, I, uh, um, using RCS actually causes a change in delta V so as a result I just use that little trick there to um, bring our two crafts together and dock them nice and gently Anyway, um, after I took off, I um, I actually launched a very ideal window to uh, rendezvous with this vehicle here, so it didn't actually take me very long, and I used the exact same method as I did when com when uh, launching them from Kerbin. However, um, I decided not to show you guys that because it definitely can be a very boring process, and again, time time is of the essence, you know that sort of thing, you know. Anyway, so here's our uh, footage of them docking. And now that we have the whole craft together, we can now plan our, or perform, what's the point, our lathe escape. And then once we've escaped from lathe, we can then wait for our periapsis to be in our ideal location. So that we can then, because, because Jewel is very, very big, it means when you escape from it, you actually end up getting a massive gravity assist which means for a very very small amount of um, delta V you can actually end up right back at Kerbin. I'm pretty sure that the burn I used uh, to escape from, to eject from Joule was actually only about 600 meters per second to end up all the way back at Kerbin. Although that is, in saying that, I did get a Tylo gravity assist which put my orbit in an ideal location in order to um, escape from Jewel and end up back at Kerbin, but um, that was actually not planned. That was actually just a happy accident that occurred. So, um, I mean, I was planning on doing something similar anyway, but um, the the um, the orbit they ended up in Jewel for ejection back to Kerbin was, yes, it was 
I couldn't have asked for a better one. So uh, thank you, game, for um, accidentally giving me a very nice assist there. So anyway, here's me ejecting from Lathe. Hmm. I guess this gives me a bit of free time to actually talk about the landing, because there's some stuff I want to talk about which I didn't get time to talk about. So I wanted to mention Lathe Atmosphere. It actually took me by surprise, because I've never actually landed an SSTO or a winged vehicle like that um, on Lathe before. And what actually surprised me was um, how drastic its atmosphere is, B because it's rather tenuous and thin at the top. But um, but in Kerbin's atmosphere, it's it felt when I was going up, it was a lot thicker than Kerbin's atmosphere at high heights. Like at 22 kilometers, it felt, or 20 kilometers up, it felt a lot thicker. I'm pretty sure my rapier engines were operating a lot more efficiently than they would at Kerbin, which is interesting. However, when I was actually at sea level, it definitely felt a lot, um, a lot um, less dense than uh, Kerbin's atmosphere. So yes. Anyway, so now that I this is uh, me doing the uh, engine transplant, I like to call it after I had expended enough fuel that it could all be pumped into the um, actual SSCO body itself. And I can also dump my excess oxi oxidizer as well. Because the, um, yeah, the, I did actually have a little bit of leftover oxidizer because I did pack uh, a couple of units extra, like 30 units extra or something, which I did end up pumping into my craft for the, um, um, descent into lathe. Uh, I don't know why I packed extra fuel, but I, I just did. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, now that that's all done, I've in fact now ended up in... This is me, you saw me um, doing my burn to end up in Council Kerbin, and I did a small correction burn to bring my apparatus to a more desirable spot. And I actually, now, if I was going to be doing this, you know, actually properly to be as efficient as possible, I'd actually use the assist that Kerbin was going to give me to drop my my apoapsis to about the height of Juna and then swing back and and then circularize. However, I had enough that I could actually circularize around Kerbin. However, I was going so fast that I couldn't actually re-enter at that point. So I decided to do a few aero brake passes to lower my apoapsis so that I'd come in a lot slower. Uh, this is just me showing off one of the aero brake passes, but I did about 15 of them to really lower my apoapsis down to a nice and safe height. Anyway, so um, this is me actually performing my, I guess you could say, final deorbit burn. I, I saw the Kerbal Space Center w where it was uh, in relation to where I was and stuff, and figured that's a pretty good spot to, um, you know, to try and deorbit for, to aim for. Um, I ended up overshooting by a lot, but that just might be because, you know, uh, to be honest, I was pretty tired at this point. I'd been up for like 30 hours straight because I had in fact been recording this for 30 hours straight, and I might have been a bit tired, so that's why I might have overshot so drastically. Anyway, I ended up recovering the craft for 70% um, value, so it's still a really efficient mission. A, um, a runway landing would have been nice, but water landings are very cool, and I did specifically design the craft to uh, survive a water landing because I figured I might end up having to land off the coast of Lathe Shore, so I designed it with that in mind. So I figured, oh well, instead of reverting, I might as well show off the water landing capa capacities of this craft and perform a nice and gentle water landing to give you guys an outro screen too. That's right, I'm in fact using my Kerbin uh, landing to give you guys a bit more of an interesting outro screen. So yes, I do hope you enjoyed my mission. I, I enjoyed it and I put a lot of hard work and hours into it, so please do comment. Let me know what you thought about it. Please leave a like and if you see it, saw this and you really enjoyed it, please do subscribe because I really do like subscriptions. They help me a lot as a creator. Other than that, thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed.
please support me and have a nice day.